Hi everybody, welcome to another Q&A session with me, finally, it's been months since we've done one. Uh, I've got a lot of your questions listed here. Warning though, I got a lot of the same ones that I've already answered in other previous Q&As. Um, so if you haven't seen those, I will put the playlist link in the box below. So these are all ones that I have not yet received. Um, so if I didn't get to your question, I might have already answered it in another one. Um, and again, I've listed all the topics in the box below with the times, so you can skip to a certain question if you want to. Is it possible to reach a plateau with flexibility? I am not a naturally flexible person, and though I have improved with stretching, I am improving very, very slowly and not with very dramatic results. Yes, the thing about flexibility is that it takes ages. Um, unless you start very, very young, you know, you see those horrible, horrible stage mothers taking their daughter's feet and yanking them. Um, but the reason they're doing that is because if you get it young, then it comes fast. If you get it late, then it takes a while. Um, so the key, again, is just to do it slowly. Be patient. Make sure you're warm when you're stretching. Warmer muscles are more pliable, and so that way you will actually improve your flexibility faster. So be warm when you're stretching. Also, hold your stretches for at least 15 seconds. If you pop into a stretch and then pop out, you're not going to get the maximum flexibility. So really, really hold them for at least 15 seconds, maybe 20 or 30. And just take your time, breathe, try not to tense the rest of your body up because then you're holding like this and you can't stretch. Breathe while you're stretching, make sure you're warm, and yes, it takes time. You will reach a plateau um, because the muscles need to catch up. They need to kind of restructure themselves in your loose state. So be patient. It's absolutely normal to, to have a plateau. So just keep doing your stretches. That's the most important thing. If you reach a plateau, keep stretching because you don't want to go back to being tight. So just be patient um, and you'll get there. How do you overcome a dancing plateau? Similar question. I have been working really hard this last year and have been having weekly privates, yet I still feel like there is too much that I struggle with and that it doesn't come more naturally. How do I push through this while keeping my confidence intact? It's so easy to just let it convince me that I'm not made for dance. If you have any experience with experience with this or tips, could you please share them? Yes, great question. Know that you're not alone. Everybody goes through a plateau. There were many, many days when I was in New York City Valley where I'd wake up and I could not turn that day, nothing was working, bad rehearsal. Um, everybody has those days and you feel like you're not getting better. Just keep going and remember, and I've said this before in other videos, the wonderful thing about dance is that we can fix it tomorrow. Yes, you should dance like every day is your last, but unlike gymnasts, athletes, skaters, who vie for that gold medal and if they're on that day, they're on, and if they're off, they miss it, we get to keep improving. Each performance gets better. Each time there's something to work on. Each class you can keep progressing. So you're going to have days where it just does not work or you feel like you're not getting better. Um, but know that everybody does that and it's normal. For me, every time I'm rehearsing a role, what happens is I improve really, really quickly. From day to day, things get better, 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 better. And then I hit a point where nothing gets better. So if I was rehearsing something for two months less, less let's say, for the first month, every day is better, every day is better, it's good, it's good, it's good. I get to the halfway point before I perform it and things start going way downhill. Like it not, doesn't work, I can't do it, fall out of every turn, I mean it's not pretty. And so every time I panic and think, oh I'm not getting better, this is, this is happening, I hate this, and so I'm never gonna be able to do this. But then after a couple weeks I kind of build back up. And what happens basically is when your body gets used to doing something day after day after day after day, your muscles are going to start saying, we're not doing this anymore. you got to be kidding me. You're doing this again. I mean, honestly, your body kind of just says, I'm done. So it's very, very normal to hit a plateau or to feel like you're not improving or things are getting worse. Just keep dancing, like the flexibility, keep doing what you do, you'll get past it. Every time this happens to me, every single time I do a roll, it gets great worse and then it finally peaks. So just know it's completely normal and just it's it's 90% mental. Know that it's going to happen. Know that you're going through it and you say, you know what, this is going to get better. I just have to keep doing what I do. Muscle memory, stay in, you know, stay focused. Remember why you dance. Remember why you love it and you'll get through that plateau. The next two are very similar. What do you suggest if you didn't get into any summer intensives that you auditioned for. I'm 15. I've been taking your ballet bar and center workouts, but so far I'm wondering if I do this every day, will that be enough to hold me until September? I found a one-week workshop in August, but as far as intensives go, that's all I'm doing. Someone else asked, 
Could you please talk about the daily recommendation dose of exercise the dancer should do during vacation or the summer? How do you keep yourself in shape and make progress? I can't afford to go to a summer course. Great question. Um, believe it or not, a little bit every day helps you stay in shape. Um, you might not make as much progress as someone in a full intensive summer course, but you can by doing your daily ballet workouts, doing Pilates a couple times a week, doing your cross training. Um, it takes a lot of self-discipline. Obviously dance takes a lot of self-discipline and if you don't have that structure, it takes even more. But I would say that yes, keep doing your ballet bars and your centers. Um, if you're a student who is a trying to be a dancer, put your point shoes on every single day. Even if you can only do releves on the carpeted floor, if that's all you can do, do it. Um, because again, you'll be surprised that every little bit helps. And even if you don't have, again, that full intensive, you'll improve more than you think you do. Because what usually happens to students who are really, really intensive summer course students, um, I found this in my experience, you're so intense for that five to six weeks, and then you have a break, and you slide back and you have to kind of catch up too. So you'll in actuality end up not very far behind them um, once the, the year starts again. So just keep doing what you do. Yes, you might not be getting that full intensive training, but the more you can do yourself, the more you can be disciplined about it, the better off it's going to be. And I guarantee you, you will not be as far behind as you think. So Pilates two or three times a week, um, ballet classes coming Tuesday, I'm doing another center for you guys, center class, just flashing news flash. Um, keep doing your bars, your center, put your point shoes on when you can, cross train. Um, I have a couple of little ab workouts and leg workouts on here that you guys can, can do. Um, but again, every little bit helps. Just keep doing what you do and, and make the effort and I'm telling you it will pay off. Are you going to do any more makeup tutorials? Yes, if you guys want them. Would you prefer the stage ones, the everyday ones, both? None. Let me know in the comments. I've been on the fence about the makeup because they're not as popular as the ballet ones. But now that I have the second channel, I definitely have the space to do it now. Um, so just let me know. If you guys want more makeup, I'm obviously happy to do so. It's how I started this channel. Um, I know some of you have requested stage looks, so we'll probably go back to those. Um, but let me know. Comments below. Do you want more makeup tutorials? If so, which kind? I've been getting a really odd burning type sensation when I've been stretching my hip warm up and doing my hip warm up before class. I'm wondering whether it's lactic acid buildup or something else. That's a bit odd. Um, I don't know a lot about this. I would say maybe it's lactic acid. Something you guys can do for sore muscles. Um, a lot of you asked about soreness and I've t I talked about this in another Q&A. Epsom salt baths are miracle workers. I survived my ballet career at New York City Ballet taking Epsom salt baths. Um, that should really help. But I would say if something is really burning, pull back. A little bit. Do some gentle stretching before class. Don't whack your hips out. Like I've said, no splits before class. No, none of this before class. Um, gentle, gentle warm up before class because the way bar and center are designed is that you warm up as you go. So plies are a great warm up. Tondus are a great warm up. Um, and just make sure that if you do any crazy stretching, it's at the end of class, not before. Um, but I'd maybe try the Epsom salt bath and if, if it persists and it's really bothering you, I'd see a doctor. I'm not sort of familiar enough with this to give you a full answer, but I try the Epsom salt baths, be gentle with your stretching, and if it continues, even if you backed off, I would see a doctor about it. What's the best way to improve point work? Lots and lots of releves. <laughs> no, really, honestly. Um, the way to improve point work is ankle strength. So I have the feet and point work strengthening workout and exercises on here. I will link them below. Um, TheraBand work, you know, a lot, a lot of releves. The more you can do this with your shoe, the stronger your feet are. And that's releves. Don't do your releves like this. You really want to do roll up through the releve. And that's actually why the Balanchine dancers have the strongest feet because you are trained. We were trained from day one. Releve is like this. We never popped. And the more you can roll through the foot, I know this sounds very cliche, the more you can roll through the foot, the stronger your feet are. And that's why we're able to do such fast stuff. So when you're doing your releves, yes, you can say do releves all day long, but you really wanna make sure you're doing them through the ball of the foot, every single metatarsal, every releve. And I'm telling you, it will really, really help. I need to do a, a point work bar and center on here. I realize that, haven't done it yet, going to do it. Um, so be watching for that. 
coming soon ish but um we'll definitely do some more point videos on here because I, I think i haven't done very many so i will do that to help you guys out but um yeah really 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 roll through your feet on those relevés and the slower you can the better this doesn't do anything right plie relevé plie relevé when a dancer gets a role like aurora how does she manage to get into it i wonder if how they study about the character and make it as movements, especially about classical ballet. Normally other people did it so many times, but interesting, the expressions are all different. When you get it, so, so let me tell you my experience as Aurora. What happens is you get into the studio with your ballet master, and as you're learning the piece, as you're learning the steps and rehearsing them, they're telling you about, obviously you know the story, but they're saying, oh, on this particular step, um, this is happening and you want to feel this and this and that and they explain it to you a little bit but you also have to do a lot of research on your own for me the way I get into character is I put I take out this is kind of odd but I kind of take out my own brain and put that character's brain in so if I'm Aurora and I'm on stage I honestly am like trying to be in the story and believe what's happening is really happening like these four princes are here to meet me and da 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 and, oh I'm young and innocent and you have to kind of get it in to your head that you're that character. I hate when dancers act. I'm gonna to pretend to be Aurora. I'm gonna to pretend to marry the prince. You have to believe it. You have to put yourself in that story and believe what's happening on stage is really happening. And then your reactions can be genuine. So I constantly have a a conversation going on in my head. Oh, there's that prince, and I'm really shy. You know, he's giving me a rose, and what does that mean? And da, da, da. Things like that. That helps you get into the character. Because normally, at least with New York City Ballet, we didn't really have time to sit down and have our ballet master say, okay, let's discuss this character. Maybe other companies do. Um, I'm actually pretty fairly certain that ABT does more character work than City Ballet did. Um, but ordinarily you have to kind of find it on your own because otherwise then you look end up looking like everybody else you know um you don't want to look like every other every other dancer you want to be you in that role that was especially true when i danced juliet you know you really have to find yourself in it but also take your brain out and put the character's brain in so when you're on stage with your romeo you're really in love with him you're not pretending to be in love with him you have to honestly believe what's happening on stage is really happening and and not worry so much about the steps so that's kind of a weird answer but the best way to do it is to not act it's to be don't act the character be the character my IT band is extremely tight I've had numerous PTs tell me this they've massaged both out most pain I've ever felt in my life I've been there use tape giving me stretches to do daily uh, the tape and the massages have worked in the past but when I try to do the stretches it makes the pain worse um, when, the, when I feel the pain, it's this spasm that's sharp and then I can't straighten my legs for about five minutes. What should I do? IT bands, when they get tight, trust me, I've been there, you feel like you can barely walk. Um, going back to the other question, Epsom salt baths. Epsom salt bath, Epsom salt bath, Epsom salt bath. Can't say it enough. What the Epsom salts do is they pull the lactic acid out of your muscles in addition to the, the warm water relaxing them. So when you take an Epsom salt bath, you know those big quart containers you can get? I would sometimes pour the entire container in the bath and make the water as hot as I could stand it. Um, you, it's not a bath that's fun. It's not a relaxing spa type experience. Um, it's for muscle you know, maintenance. Um, but will, that will really help you. So really, really hot water. Obviously, don't burn yourself. But you should actually, you, you should be red when you come out of the tub. That's how warm the water needs to be. Um, and put, you know, you have to kind of drink water through it. It's not a fun experience, but it honestly, honestly helps. And especially those IT bands, which is really hard to get. Um, those Epsom salt baths should help you. But the other thing I want you to do is check your hips. Are your hips tight? You know, the tennis ball trick where you lay on your side and put the tennis ball in there and kind of dig around because your IT band starts at the top of your hip. So if your IT bands are so, so tight that you can barely touch them, roll out your hips, see what happens. Because I guarantee you it's not just the IT band that's tight. Um, so really roll out the hip if you can, Epsom salt baths. And again, if it gets worse, pull back your training. Guys, don't push through an injury. I'm telling you from personal experience, not a good idea not a good idea so really 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 be careful 
with yourself. If it's, you know, obviously you, dancers need to be tough and push through things, but not to the point where you're gonna make it worse. Not to the point where you could damage your career in doing so. So pull back a little bit, you know, don't do as many grand plies, don't do as many big jumps. Um, Epsom salt baths, roll out your hips and see if that helps. What is the etiquette for clapping during a ballet performance? I noticed several times that during someone's solo, the audience will clap even though the music is still going on. So when is it okay to clap and when is it a faux pas? Brilliant question. I think it depends on the ballet. You know, for example, you wouldn't clap through Romeo and Juliet. You know, yay, she took poison. No. Um, so it just depends. Maybe at the end of the balcony scene, obviously, things like that. If it's a dramatic ballet, I'd be, I'd refrain. But if it's something like Don Q and the dancer's doing, you know, fortes and spinning on their head and upside down, then people can clap if it's impressive like that. Funniest clapping story I've ever had, I was doing a performance of Aurora, Sleepy Beauty. Last pas de deux. I go up, attitude promenade, they started clapping. I hadn't even let, it wasn't a let go, it wasn't a balance, I just went up to attitude promenade and started clapping. And I was like, I haven't done anything. Wait, wait, please. You know, it was so that was very inappropriate. We're in the middle of a wedding potida in a promenade, they started clapping. Oddest clapping story. Um, but you know, that's not good. But I think if it's something like Don Q, Swan Lake, Black Swan, not White Swan, um, it, it just kind of has to be self-explanatory. You know, if the dancers are doing something really hard, like the fuetes, or the guy's jumping on his head or something, <laughs> then you can clap. Not during Romeo and Juliet, not during a promenade, during the wedding pot of Sleeping Beauty. Um, it just depends. General rule to always be safe, wait till the, the music stops, wait till the solo's over, wait till the pot is over. You can never go wrong with that. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say, if it's impressive, if it's a virtuoso ballet, Don Q, Black Swan, something like that, you can clap, otherwise, no. Now let me say this, dancers really enjoy when you clap during something really difficult. Oftentimes if you don't clap during a very hard section, they get offended because they think I, I, they should have clapped there. So it's, it's a very odd situation, so I would just advise you to kind of be sensible about it. Um, but again, dramatic ballet, absolutely not. After my dance classes and private lessons, I take notes on my corrections and, and other people so that I can apply them in class. Good for you. Then I find that I have a lot of corrections written down and I don't know how to apply all of them in a single class. It gets me frustrated and then I don't end up applying them well. Do you have any advice on being able to apply corrections that you have written down in previous classes without getting overwhelmed? Brilliant question. Very, very good. As I said, good for you. Um, I would apply, I would sort of approach this generally. Or maybe say, okay, today I'm going to take any corrections I got on my turns and apply them in class today and just focus on the turns. Or I'm going to work on my placement today. Um, rather than I have to work on placement and turns and jumps and this, it can get very, very overwhelming. And good for you. Yes, the rule is that anytime a dancer gets a correction, you should apply it to yourself. Um, but it can get pretty daunting. Then I would maybe at the end of the week, kind of go over all your corrections and see if there are some that you've gotten more than once. So let's say every single day you've written down your corrections and you see by the end of the week, oh, I got that same correction every single day. I would start focusing on those the most in addition to working one per day. Um, because that obviously is something you really need to work on. If you've gotten one little thing that said, oh, your arm was out of place in this particular step and you never got it again, that's maybe not as important as one you've gotten every single day. So kind of make notes and see where are the patterns. Are you getting the most corrections on turns, on jumps, on placement? And that way you can kind of hone in your focus and set the other ones aside, still keep them, but focus on the ones that you get the most first. And then once those have improved, the teacher sees you're applying them, you have the muscle memory to keep using them, then go back to the other ones and apply those. And that way you can build on your technique because it's always important to focus on your absolute weaknesses first. I just got some new point shoes today. I also bought the gel bun head super spacers. Those are great. I was wondering if I need to just keep them in a certain kind of container bag or a small Ziploc bag that would work. Small Ziploc bag is perfectly fine. All you need to do is make sure that they're in their own bag and they're not getting germs from your shoes or they're giving off germs to other things. So just keep them in a small Ziploc bag and that should be perfectly fine. Good question though. 
I would do that with toe pads too. Keep your toe pads in a separate bag together so you don't have the sweat and the smell going to everything in your dance bag. Um, so just keep them, you know, I have a bag for my toe pads separate from everything else in my dance bag. Um, so that's never wrong. Do you know of any particular companies that tend to hire shorter dancers? Does New York City Ballet have a variety of dancers or is it specifically short, tall? Um, good question. I know we've kind of covered this generally before. In the past, past, five, ten years ago, it used to be PNB was tall, um, Miami was shorter, um, generally. European doesn't really matter, although most of the Russians are tall, on the taller side. Nowadays, it does not matter. I know Miami City Valley dancers that are very, very tall and PNB dancers that are very, very short. Um, nowadays, it honest to goodness, doesn't matter. Um, New York City Ballet has everywhere from five, one and a half, maybe, to five eleven. So there are a range of heights. Um, there are roles that are specific to heights, which I've told you guys before, even in the core. You know, short girl core, tall girl core. Um, but nowadays, height does not matter because as far as getting hired. Roles, yes, height matters. Um, for example, taller dancers, at least at New York City Ballet, never were Aurora. I think the maximum Aurora was 5'7", maybe 5'8". Really, really tall dancers can't, they just were not cast as Aurora. They were the Lilac Fairy. So it doesn't, you know, there might be an exception to the rule. I think Wendy Whalen was the exception to the rule. She's 5'8", maybe. 5758, five, she would dance to Aurora. But um, so getting hired in a company, height doesn't matter. Role, it matters. I'm starting to teach ballet. Do you have any tips or suggestions? Congratulations, that's fantastic. Um, yes, when I started teaching, I was terrified because I thought I don't have enough experience to really start teaching. I think I was 22 when I started teaching. Um, for me, the biggest thing that I realized was you can't correct every single person's fault. You know, there are some dancers where you just kind of have to let it go. You can't sit there and give every single person every single critique. It, you just don't have time for that. So don't worry about if correcting every single person for everything they're doing wrong. Um, when I teach master classes and I go away and I do things, like I did in Philadelphia, um, we had such a short period of time. It was three, three days. I saw some students only once. When I'm doing master classes, I never give personal corrections. I never single anybody out because we don't have time. I give general corrections as a whole. I say, okay, I'm seeing kind of between all of you, this is happening and this is happening. That way everybody benefits from it. Nobody feels like they're like, oh my gosh, she singled me out um, because of the short time period. Now, if you're teaching, you know, in like the whole school year, if you're on faculty somewhere and you're doing a whole course, obviously then you can do personal corrections. But if it's just a guest teaching here and there, a master class here and there every once in a while, I would maybe do more general corrections. That way everybody gets something out of it and you don't single somebody out, make them feel uncomfortable, and the other students don't feel like, well, she didn't correct me, that kind of thing. Um, but also I think the, the most thing you have to remember is common sense. We can't, like when I'm teaching students who have no balancing training whatsoever. I can't hone in on the balancing on them. There's just no, there's no point. They're not trained that way. I don't get upset if they do a pirouette with two bent knees or, you know, rather than the straight back leg, because again, there's no time for that. It doesn't benefit them. So I really try and use common sense as far as their training goes. Now, again, if you're doing a, a whole winter course, you're on faculty, then you can have your own curriculum. But if not, Kind of do more general things. Don't worry about too specific. Um, you know, you can get specific if they're if they're having problems with devil pains or turns or something. But if they're if they're turning with two bent knees and you want a straight back leg, that's not something that's worth spending the time on. You want to give as much corrections as you can that in the most beneficial way. Um, for example, things I always touch on artistry. I always touch on turning, making sure that the you're bringing the shoulders with you things like that, things that can benefit everybody. Um, so I advise you, you know, if you're just starting to teach, you're probably not on faculty somewhere, give general corrections, common denominator themes throughout the classroom, make your students feel comfortable. I'm not a teacher that's gonna be harsh and brutal and 
and be mean. I, there are plenty of teachers like that. I don't need to be one of them. <laughs> I'm the relaxed, funny, everybody's wonderful teacher. Um, so just, it, it's about using common sense, be a little more general, um, and make sure the students have fun rather than feel like Ugh, in your class. I have a lot of holes in my tights and I don't know if it's because of what I'm washing them with or how I'm washing them. What can I do? Great question. Tights. I tend to either wash them by hand in the sink, hang them up to dry, or put them on the very, very delicate cycle in the washing machine all by themselves um, and then hang them up to dry. I never put my tights in the dryer. Ever, ever, ever. Um, also make sure, and this sounds really silly, if you are putting them in the washing machine, don't wash them with anything with buttons, zippers, um, clasps, anything that could catch and make a hole. It could be something that you're washing them with, like the zipper. Um, the other thing, surefire way to not get holes, in the sink with, with shampoo. Never wrong. Um, but I also would do, you can do them on the delicate cycle in the washing machine and hang them up to dry. Just be sure you're washing them by themselves and not with anything that could catch and make them rip. I was wondering, do you have any tips to not sickle in relevés? This is something I've been kind of having trouble with since I have been only been dancing for six months. That's understandable since you're still still new. Again, I need to do some more point work stuff on here. Um, the thing about sickling in relevés, sometimes people, and this sounds odd, point their feet too hard. And if you point your foot too hard, it goes like this, and then you get the sickle. So make sure you're not pointing too hard in pointing. Relevés, think of going to the big toe. Yeah, a lot of teachers say all five toes, and yes, you do need all five toes on the shoe, but that tends to kind of make people go like this, and then you're sickling rather than being over. So really try and releve to the big toe. My shoes, and I don't have one, I could go get one, but my shoes always die at the big toe and not at the outside because I've been trained to dance towards the big toe. SAB is very much about that, and that's why nobody at City Ballet has sickled feet ever because we're all big toe, big toe, big toe, big toe. Um, so really try and, and see, maybe look at yourself sideways in the mirror, how you're going up. Are you going up to the little toe? Or are you going up to the big toe? Really be aware of that and feel that kind of pinch in your ankle where that heel is forward. That should really, really help. And when you're pointing your shoes, make sure the heel is forward and you're not pointing so hard that that happens. Last question. What do you love most about dancing and ballet? For me, it's expressing myself and through the music. When I was nine months old, my parents tell me this, obviously I don't remember. When I was nine months old, anytime classical music came on, I stop whatever I was doing. I might be like, nah, and then music would come on and I'd stop and I'd listen. And as I grew to walk and move around. I was always trying to become the music. Like when I first saw the Nutcracker, I wanted to become that music and the only way I knew how to become the music and express myself was through dancing. Um, so for me, especially when I do a very dramatic role like Juliet or something, it's just that expression and being able to give, feel emotions and give emotions without any repercussion, you know, because Juliet gets to go insane and crazy and if you did that in real life, People look at you like, you know, or Black Swan who gets to be, you know, evil. I wouldn't do that in real life. Wouldn't dream of doing that in real life. But with Black Swan, you get to be very, you know, evil and she's just fun. Um, but for me, it's the expression. And the only way I really feel most comfortable expressing myself is through dance and through movement. Even from when I was a little kid. I would dance around the house. And my grandmother, actually, I was about 18 months at the time. And she said, you need to get that kid in ballet class because no child, children don't do that. They don't just, every time they hear classical music dance. So that was kind of how I got into ballet, was expressing myself through music and having no inhibitions on stage. I feel more comfortable on stage oftentimes than I do in real life, so good question. All right, you guys, so that's it. Again, let me know about the makeup tutorials, if you want them, how you want them, etc. Um, I've listed the other Q and A's in the box below as well as all the topics with the times. Um, if you missed my video on glissades, it is over there now, new card, there. <laughs> to, you can click it to watch. Coming Tuesday, another center workout, be watching for that. I love you all, thank you so, so much. Your questions were brilliant as always, and I will see you next time and possibly tomorrow on the other channel.